So our next talk is by uh, Dr. Francesco uh, Terello from University of Palermo. Uh, the title of the talk is Quantum Optics in Topological and non hermitian Photonic Gaps. Okay, stage is yours. Yeah, thanks all. I have 20 minutes, right? Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. It's a pleasure participating in this conference, even though from my office, I wish uh, I could, I can participate in person maybe next year. Okay, so this is probably, this talk is probably about something else compared to what you heard so far in this conference. Uh, and um, it's a little bit uh, about uh, overlap between quantum optics and other fields such as condensed matter. So, um, let me start from what we know from traditional quantum optics. We know that um, compared to free space, if you place an atom in a cavity, then this may uh, affect its interaction with the field uh, in a substantial way. You can, for instance, think of a partial effect in a weak coupling regime or in the strong coupling regime, you can think of uh, you know, vacuum rabbit oscillations. So the take home message is that if you change the electromagnetic bath in which your atom is immersed in, then this can uh, modify its emission properties uh, or even uh, create interesting uh, dress states, such as dress states occurring in the familiar James Cummings model. Now, over the last few years, uh, say about the last decade, thanks to a number of technologic developments, uh, in field, uh, in uh, you know, in um, uh, scenarios such as circuit QED or cold atoms, uh, we can now fabricate uh, relatively sophisticated photonic baths, and in particular photonic lattices, and study their interactions with atoms. So, for instance, you can uh, uh, obtain this by um, assembling couple cavities or resonators, where each cavity or resonator can uh, be locally coupled to a real or artificial atom, or generally I should say a quantum emitter, such as a superconducting qubit. Now, given that this is a lattice, even if the, before it's coupling to the atoms, the field normal frequencies will be organized generally in bands and generally separated by band gaps. So assume now to, um, hmm, make an atom interact with your photonic lattice and say that the atom frequency is set with, well within the band gap. You see that in general, a uh, dressed bound state, and this is a dressed atom photon bound state, will arise at a frequency near the original atomic frequency omega zero. And uh, in this state, the atom is dressed by a single photon exponentially localized around it. Now, um, um, a major appeal of these bound states uh, in this literature is that you can exploit them in order to mediate effective uh, Hamiltonians, namely effective interactions between the atoms, which can be even decoherence free. And you can think of uh, two nearby atoms, each atom uh, form its own uh, addressed atom photon bound state. When you start um, making the atoms ap approach one another, the photonic wave function of the respective mass state will start overlapping a little bit, and then similarly to the formation of a molecule, you'll get an effective atom-atom um, Hamiltonian, and due to the fact that everything here happens inside the photonic band gap, this is actually decoherence free, and uh, this is quite exciting because this way you can engineer uh, uh, sophisticated uh, Many body spin Hamiltonians uh, and uh, all the related applications, you know, for quantum technologies and quantum simulations. Okay, so uh, what's next now? What's the situation today? This is the current perspective. Um, so, if you broad your your broaden your viewpoint a little bit and uh, think of fields such as condensed matter and nanophotonics and even beyond. We have in particular two big actors, so to speak, on stage. One actor is topological phases, another actor is non emission physics. And you can see uh, that these fields are really uh, exploding, in particular, non emission physics in the literature, and there are interesting connections, uh, many, many connections between the two. 
Now, the natural question is uh, what about interfacing, combining these things with quantum optics? Uh, is there any interesting chemical reaction that can, ar can arise by mixing these concepts? And this is a question that people started asking recently. Okay, so uh, let me start from uh, to topology first. Uh, um, it's a kind of uh, milestone of uh, topological theory of topological phases in condensed matter that if you're given a translational invariant lattice, such as the one sketched here, and these pictures, bands and bang gaps, now, when this lattice is an uh, non-trivial topological phase, then if you break, um, if you break translational invariants, for instance, through a defect, which can be a vacancy, as for instance, in this case, but not necessarily a vacancy, it could be an impurity, it could be just an edge of your lattice and so on. Then you will see appearance of so-called edge states, which are localized uh, states, localized stationary states, which are topologically robust and uh, which are energetically lying uh, right at the middle of the band gap. Now, can we do, what about uh, importing these concepts into the quantum optics domain? Can we do any, anything interesting with that? So in this case, we should, uh, instead of a lattice, uh, which is normally thought in the condensed matter community is a lattice of electrons, we would have a photonic lattice, and uh, this photonic lattice is now uh, made interact with one or more atoms. Can we do anything interesting with that? Okay, so one rather natural task thing that we can do, and this was done uh, both theoretically and experimentally, is that we can exploit these edge states, not only in the, for one dimensional system as the one that I sketched before, but also two dimensional systems. We can use these edge states as a bus for instance, to uh, accomplish quantum state transfer between two atoms, or in the case of two dimensional systems, we can use um, edge states in order to engineer carrier emission from one emitter. These are kind of rather natural application in the sense that what you do in these cases is that you have your lattice under open boundary condition. The lattice are already before coupling to the atoms exhibits these uh, edge states, and now you couple the atoms, uh, use edge states as bus. But now a more interesting question can be asked, which is the following. What if I have my photonic lattice and I go for one, I'm admitting a topological phase. This is translational invariant. And now I couple it to an atom and it's decoupling to the atom itself that breaks translational invariance. What happens? Shall I predict occur and observe occurrence of edge states? But if so, this would be dressed edge state. What does happen? You see that it is, this is like uh, specializing the problem uh, uh, from a defect, a static defect, to a defect featuring quantum internal degrees of freedom or quantum defect in short. So uh, the first time people answered this question it was about two years ago in this paper and they considered a specific uh, model which is the celebrated so-called SSH model the photonic version actually of the SSH model uh, this was a theoretical answer but which was experimentally confirmed last year uh, in a circuit QED architecture in the Oscar painters group at Caltech and what happens is that indeed, if you tune the atom's frequency right at the middle of the band gap, in this case, you have only two bands, then a topologically protected dress state uh, whose wave function looks quite like that that you would get in the case of a static defect arises right in the middle of the band gap. And you can exploit this topologically protected uh, dressed edge state in order to engineer effective atom atom Hamiltonians according to the framework that I sketched before. And these have uh, interesting dependencies uh, on the uh, atoms' locations and distances. So far, so good. And, uh, but now there is a natural question that you can ask, and this is what we asked last year. All of that was proven for a specific model, the SSH model, which is actually, as far as I know, the simplest lattice model uh, exhibiting topological phases. 
But the question is, what about the general model? Uh, what are the criteria, general criteria for occurrence of these topologically protected uh, dry stage state? And if so, what are the general properties? Now, uh, in order to reply to these questions, so we exploited clues from the SSH model. One clue is that if you, um, if you look at what I said before, namely that you have appearance of this dry stage state and look at the photonic wave function, the photonic wave function shape is just the same shape that you will have if instead of breaking translational invariant through an atom, you will break it through a vacancy. Namely, you introduce a vacancy in your lattice without any atoms. Second and even more interesting clue is that it turns, as I said, if you tune the atom frequency right in the middle of a band gap, then a dressed uh, topologically protected edge state will appear again at the middle of the band gap, and this is just the same frequency as the atom. Now, remarkably, this takes place regardless of the atom photon coupling strength. So, regardless of the atom photon coupling strength, you'll get the dress state occurring just at the same frequency. Its shape, namely its wave function, will be affected by the coupling strength, but it will always be pinned to the energy, the same energy as the atom. This is kind of counterintuitive or surprising if you have in mind, especially dress states from, for instance, the James Cummings model, where indeed we have that if you keep increasing the atom photon uh, coupling strength, then the, you'll see the dress state frequency depart more and more from the atom's frequency. So what is going on here? It's going on that here we, uh, what we realized is that these topologically dress states belong to a general class of uh, atom photon dress states, and not necessarily we have uh, topological systems in there. And we baptize this class of dress states, vacancy like dress states, and you'll see why in a second. So, we, if you, in order to characterize this class, you can consider rather a general. Uh, Hamiltonian model for your photonic bath, not necessarily transactional invariant. Uh, only condition is that you have a WA coupling. And, um, and uh, okay, and the definition is quite simple. Uh, you, this is the general shape of a single photon, uh, atom photon dress state. And what you, uh, you define a vacancy like dress state or VDS in short, is one such edge state occurring at the same frequency as the atom. Now, through a two-line proof, you can see that this is entirely equivalent to saying that if you look at the photonic component of your dress state and photonic wave function, this exhibits a node at the atom's location. And uh, you can also work out general formulas for these states in terms of the uh, parameters of the um, bare photonic bath. And uh, you can wonder now, when do these states occur? What, is the, what are the criteria that have to be matched in order for these states to occur? Now, take your, your atom coupled to your photonic bath and uh, call B the lattice site to which the atom is directly coupled to, replace this site with a vacancy. And so you get now a photonic bath with a vacancy in the place of the atom. Work out the normal modes of, these, of the photonic bath obtained this way, and which are represented by these uh, spheres here. If you have one of such normal modes of the photonic bath with a vacancy in place of the atom, occurring at the same frequency as the atom, then you see that according to a scheme, which is in fact just the same scheme behind formation of a well-known dark state in atomic physics and also invariant states in quantum biology, you probably saw something this morning in the Susana Welgas talk, there must be then in this case, a superposition of your, um, of the, uh, of the eigenstate of the photonic bath with a vacancy and your atom, which is certainly a stationary state of the full Hamiltonian. There are quite interesting examples that can be given um, um, and I, will, I don't have time to discuss them, but I will just say that as far as we know for now, 
the, um, the, the, the most important consequence of this class of dress state is that this is the natural class that you have to consider if you want to study topologically protected dress state. And in fact, if you use the, you know, the well-known uh, Altranzin bioclassification of lattices uh, and based on the symmetries of your bare photonic lattice, you can in fact map the problem into the problem where, um, where you have occurrence of an edge state given a vacancy uh, by introducing a vacancy in your lattice. And uh, this is in fact work, this in fact works as a scheme, as a recipe to find new classes of such topologically dressed states. And I will show a couple of examples in a second. And this works kind of as a kind of necessary condition. So uh, can we go the other way around? Namely, you may ask whether if I'm given a topologically protected dress state, will it always be a vacancy like dress state falling within this class defined this way? And the answer to this question is yes, and this can be proven through symmetry arguments. And this shows that this VDS class is a, uh, an important class to worry about uh, in topological uh, quantum optics, so long as uh, dress states are concerned. Uh, we applied that, as I anticipated, to another two models. One is our 1D lattice, which is called kreutz ladder model. And then to the celebrated Haldane model, which is 2D. And in, in this case, you see that the, uh, this uh, dress state features the atom dressed by a single photon, which keeps orbiting around it. Good. Uh, let me, before uh, saying a few words about the other project on non emission physics, let me just acknowledge uh, the, my collaborators on this project Luca Leonforte, my PhD student, and then Angelo Carollo, who is a researcher at the University of Palermo. Uh, shall I have five more minutes? I think so. Yeah, you have more, a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay, let me just briefly sketch what we did uh, regarding atom scuttles on emission photonic lattice. Um, so uh, assume now that I'm given a photonic lattice where, which is lossy. So it's, it's in fact coupled to uh, some sort of super bot. And uh, so far I've been discussing about um, the case where the structure of the photonic lattice, and this can be a structure emitting topological phases, uh, results from a pa the pattern of coupling strength between cavities. Now, assume that I put, uh, I allow cavities to be lossy, so I have local losses in my photonic lattice. And the question is what does this affect occurrence of atom photon bound state? So you know that um, lossy photonic uh, bath is um, commonly described, uh, for instance, in quantum optics, not necessarily in quantum optics, through an effective Hermitian and Newtonian. However, the standard case considered so far as, uh, is that, that of the uniform losses. Namely, you uh, put the same loss rate on each lattice site. So this gamma n is a constant, and in this case, you get the same normal modes as the lossless photonic bath with the normal frequencies, which are just the same, but a uh, complex shift. Now, the question is what if I introduce a pattern, a non trivial pattern of local losses, which is not uniform? So, in other words, what if the structure introduced stru structure into my photonic lattice, not through coupling strength between cavities, but through a uh, pattern of local losses. <clears throat> How does this uh, affect atom-photon interactions? Okay, what we saw, is, I'll just briefly mention what we saw in this project is um, we, we consider a case study, which is a photonic lattice called the model, uh, which before interaction with the atom uh, exhibits a photon chirality. And based on this photon chirality, this uh, lattice exhibits the so-called non-emission skin effect, which is currently very popular in the literature. Namely, under open boundary conditions, the bare photonic lattice features normal modes, which are all 
accumulated on the left edge in this case. Now I couple atoms to the photonic lattice, what happens? Let me just discuss the most interesting point in the parameter space, so a critical value of the loss rate. And let me consider only two atoms. If I put the two atoms on near Snidbor cell and excite only one of the two, you see that this, this guy will get uh, de excited, and meanwhile, the, the other atom will, be, will get excited, absorbing part of the excitation emitted from the first atom, which is kind of partial state transfer. The state transfer is partial because the system is lossy, it's dissipation. Um, what about the other way around? What if I excite the other atom and uh, look at the excitation of the two? Nothing happens. If you excite the right atom, this guy will just decay and the first atom will remain unexcited all the time. So this means that we have here no reciprocal interactions between the two atoms. And notably, the correlative of these interactions goes from left to right. So the left atom with the right atom, not the other way around. And this is in constraints to the lattice chirality, which is from the right to left. Now, what if we place the two atoms in different cells? It turns out that any other choice for the atoms locations will give zero interactions, as you can see here. But now, quite remarkably, if your lattice is subject to open boundary conditions and you place your atom on the two edges of the lattice, then again, you'll see um, a no reciprocal interaction going on, just like in the case where they were nearest neighbor. So overall, this is the situation. You see that um, if the atoms are nearest neighbor, then you have this no reciprocal interaction between them. In any other case, you get zero interaction. But again, if the two atoms are placed on edge cells, they will interact. Just if somehow the lattice were not interrupted at this point. Okay, um, okay, you can generalize this to one atom per cell, and uh, this was just what happens uh, for a specific value of the loss rate. In general, you have a neat, very interesting dependence on the loss rate, and you have interactions ranging from long range to exactly nearest neighbor. And uh, we saw something which is kind, kind of crazy, namely, uh, you can ask, uh, uh, you can wonder, how do I get this effective Hamiltonian between the atoms? Under what boundary conditions for the lattice? And the answer is that the boundary conditions of the lattice are not important. So you get the same atom photon effective atom atom effective Hamiltonian, both in the case that the lattice is open and in the case that it's subject to uh, periodic boundary conditions, as you can see here, and in particular, this means that if the, uh, the open lattice is subject to uh, open boundary conditions, this can- uh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'm so, we're almost run out of time, so if you could wrap up. No, I, I, I'm done. I, I'm okay. just, uh, despite the lattice uh, is, does not, fulfill translational invariance, you get, it can mediate a translational invariance uh, effective Hamiltonian between the atoms. Okay, let me just acknowledge the other people on this project, Federico Roccati, my PhD student, and Salvatore Lorenzo, Massimo Palma, Angelo Carollo, they're all based at the University of Palermo, where actually Federico Roccati is about to move to Luxembourg, and then Giuseppe Calaio from ICFO. So in conclusion, I identified a class of dress states, which, are, which appear to have a key role in topological quantum optics. And I finally discussed how by coupling atoms to photonic bath, where you have structured losses, you can have uh, occurrence of exotic atom photon interactions. And finally, let me just advertise that we expect to have in the forthcoming months, a PhD and postdoc positions in our group. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. And sorry if I made it a bit longer. Thank you very much. So we can have a question. Are there any questions? <coughs> so please, Andre, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I might ask a question. Thank you very much, uh, Francesco. I have a question about the first part of your presentation. Yeah. So for the eigenstates of the path, if we make them, and they have a certain line width, how does this uh, model depend on the line width of the path? 
So if we change the alignment of the resonance of the path, will it be affected? And how? Uh, well, the path I mean, in the path, the part in the, the path in the first path is lossless. So the just the normal frequencies without broadening. Um, okay. But probably this paper may probably reply your question. I said that you see this physics, if you set your atom, you need to tune your atom um, with the frequency right at the middle of the bang up. This is rather robust. Yeah. You can see that in the weak coupling regime, if you are, if the bang up is large enough, this is rather robust to this condition. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Francesca, for the nice talk. Uh,